Well, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Congressman Adam Schiff, joins me now. Uh, thank you for being here on such a big day uh, for these issues. What did you think of that answer? Uh, I found it completely unsatisfactory. Um, that answer and the answer on recusal are the two uh, red flags for me. The problem with his answer, uh, basically, I won't agree to defer to what Bob Mueller thinks should be public, is we now have a situation where a an incoming attorney general takes the position, you can't indict the sitting president, mm -hmm. you can only impeach a sitting president, and I'm not committing to share with Congress or the American people the information you would need to know to make a judgment about whether conduct rise to that level. You just, Congressman, you just put your finger on it. I think this, this is so important. There is a legitimate debate within our system of government of what do you do if you find bad enough things about a sitting president. But if this president, in the middle of that investigation, installs someone who can short circuit whether the public or the Congress learns that information, then it seems to actually be potentially changing our system of government's check on that, situ on that situation. Well, it certainly highlights the need for Congress to continue its investigation because the attorney general nominee made clear today he's not making any promises about what he shares with Congress. Uh, we can expect, I guess, top line conclusions from Bob Mueller. We can expect him to follow the letter of the law that if he turns down a prosecutorial decision by Mueller, he'll notify Congress. But that's all he's promising, uh, which is him literally saying. I'll follow the rules. That's what he's supposed to do. You mentioned recusal for, for viewers. Again, this was such a big day on the Hill. Let's look uh, at Bill Barr on recusal questioning. Uh, I, I will seek uh, the advice of the career uh, ethics uh, personnel, but under the regulations, I make the decision as the head of the agency as to my own recusal. And Let's imagine it's a judgment call, and the judgment by the career ethics officials in the agency are that you recuse yourself. And, and Under what scenario would you not follow their recommendation? If I disagreed with it. And what would the basis of that disagreement be? I came to a different judgment. On what basis? The facts. Such as? Such as whatever facts are relevant to the recusal. Good enough? No, not at all good enough. And. Um, you know, in the absence of his writing this 19-page memo outlining all the flaws in the Mueller investigation and how Mueller, uh, you know, it was crazy to think this is a viable uh, case of obstruction of justice, you might have an arguable claim that I could ignore the advice of ethics lawyers. But here he is saying, this wasn't a job application. I wasn't really pursuing this. Um, I was just, you know, issuing this report to the Justice Department. Um, if that is true, then don't put yourself forward as a candidate. But if you're going to, you darn well better listen to the ethics lawyers. Uh, and in my, in my experience, uh, and I've sought advice of ethics lawyers mm -hmm. on different things, you follow their advice uh, for the very reason that because it pertains to you, you're not an objective party. You have an interest in the answer to the ethics question. That's why you go to someone independent and you say, tell me from an independent perspective, should I recuse myself? Uh, and I cannot see a good faith basis to refuse to do so. And given what he is saying, that the reason he was interested in this job um, when, it, when it was uh, brought to him, was that he thought a credible resolution of this would be in the national interest. It won't be credible if he ignores the advice of the ethics lawyers. So in my view, you either commit to that or you commit to recusal on the front end or you don't seek the job. But without that kind of commitment, it cer he certainly wouldn't have my vote. It, it sounds like from what you saw today, you are now more concerned uh, that if this person, Bill Barr, is confirmed, you're more concerned uh, that we may not learn all the facts from the Mueller probe. Uh, I am. And now, I have to say that I didn't find his answers today very surprising because I think he had telegraphed this was where he was likely to come down. Um, but to me, it, it validates the concern that um, the president, he may not have submitted that application as a job application, but that's how the president viewed it. Mm -hmm. He was picked by the president for the purpose of his hostility to the investigation. Uh, Justice Matt Whitaker was picked for his hostility to the investigation. It's astonishing to me that notwithstanding Bill Barr's 
otherwise uh, broad experience that he would be even considered for the job uh, after weighing in such a hostile way to the 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 seminal investigation that the Justice Department because is conducting. You, because you read the memo, and this was debated in, among other senators, you read the memo as prejudging the outcome. Uh, it certainly prejudges the outcome on obstruction of justice. And now he has tried to caveat that today. Um, uh, but when you read his memo, he says, among other things, that even when a president, their own uh, interests are involved, um, basically the attorney general is his hand, is his arm, and he can do as he wishes. And it's not obstruction of justice. That it would be highly problematic to be in a situation where you can even question the motives of a president. Well, he, he struck a different tone today, but the underlying legal philosophy he's operating under is one of uh, a very powerful unitary authority of the right. president, uh, such that, you know, he is there to do the president's will. And this assessment of a person who could become Mueller's boss comes against the extraordinary backdrop of the New York Times reporting uh, that the FBI looked at Donald Trump as a counterintelligence investigation because they were concerned he might be a Russian asset. Uh, was that new information when you read the Times story? And what are Americans to take from it? Uh, you know, I can't go into what we were initially briefed in terms of the FBI's interest concern. Was it criminal? Was it uh, um, counterintelligence? Uh, you know, who were they looking at? I can't go into the specifics of that. I can tell you from our committee's point of view, um, counterintelligence has been at the heart of our concerns. Uh, and a concern that a foreign government might have leverage over the president um, has been at the heart of our concerns. Uh, and we're determined to get to the bottom of it. Um, something explains the president's bewildering contact, uh, conduct of Russia policy. When you add to that what the Washington Post has disclosed, that he made an effort to not only exclude people from the room when he would mm -hmm. meet with Putin, um, but uh, may have attempted to um, make sure the record of that never saw right. the light and of day. And to try to get out from under sanctions and get out from NATO and new reporting and get out from Syria where Putin wants a broader sphere of influence. Is your basic message to the public it's actually worse than it looks from the public information? You know, it's hard to be worse than it looks, honestly. Hmm. Um, you know, let's say there was no compromise and uh, and this was just the president acting on his own. Um, you could not act in a way that was more furthering of Russian interests hmm. and more antagonist to our own interest than to be denigrating NATO, talk about withdrawing from NATO, bashing our democratic allies, praising autocrats, talking about doing away with sanctions uh, on Russia for invading its neighbor. I mean, those actions and others, you could not fashion something uh, more destructive of our interests. Uh, I, you know, I used to joke, and, and maybe I, I shouldn't joke about this, but the best case that the president is not an asset of the Russians is the Russians would tell him, slow down. You're too obvious. Uh, you, they're going to be on to you. He looks like um, he's trying to please them too much. Well, uh, you know, I say that in jest, but um, the reality is his policies have been so pro-Russian mm. and so destructive of our alliances um, that, uh, you know, it, it beggars an explanation. and. Um, and if that explanation is compromised, it needs to be exposed. Hmm. Uh, and, and we're running over time here. The Manafort filing um, does seem bad for the administration. And he was trying to have contact with them and also has this Russian-linked figure uh, allegedly witness tampering. Uh, the, your bottom line on this filing tonight? Well, like a lot of the uh, special counsel filings, the most important and probably most interesting parts are redacted. And what I find most notable is the sections on Konstantin Kalimnik are the most redacted. Yeah. Now, this is someone who um, the special counsel has um, acknowledged they believe is affiliated with Russian intelligence. So here you have uh, the, the campaign chairman of, of the Trump campaign lying about his contacts with someone believed to be in league with Russian intelligence. Uh, and those are the most redacted, just in my superficial view, parts mm -hmm. of this pleading. Uh, well, I can tell we've been doing this tonight, but since you brought it up, you're right. Uh, these are highly redacted, and you're saying that means there are things that Mueller has that are so sensitive there, we're just not going to know yet. 
Yes, and, and of all the things that you might lie about when you're in a cooperation agreement, the fact that what you're lying about involves right. someone believed to be associated with Russian intelligence ought to concern us the most. Right, and you're wording it very carefully, which I appreciate, but...